Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to do a follow-up video on the series I've been doing uh, essentially how to uh, use WireGuard as a VPN uh, for uh, either an office or a home lab or even your personal home network. Um, I know the first two videos I specifically highlighted how to do it with CGNAT and that essentially was because of how unique it is versus a traditional ISP that will provide you a public IP that you can route to over the internet. Um, however, in this portion of the video, or in this video rather, um, I'm not going to go into those details because if you followed what I had, whether you were using CGNAT or a traditional ISP, um, ultimately you've reached the point where this road warrior which I'm, I'm labeling as a laptop is able to connect to the network here at least to the WireGuard server um, and that's all fine and dandy but I'm sure most of you that are following these videos uh, you know you're glad you got to this point but you have other appliances machines servers you want to connect behind that network and that's where today's video comes into into play which is although this machine connected in uh, these machines need to know how to communicate back and that's where static routing comes in and uh, but after I'm done um, going through this PDF document I will then do a step-by-step -step as to how to do that in a router uh, you can do this with, with pretty much any router that's out there some ISP provider routers can let you do it as well although that's kind of a hit and miss um, but if you look at the advanced settings or in if there's a specific tab for routing you'll see what I will be doing in mine uh, I opted to use a unify router for this but the um, but the, the 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 things you need to enter are stay the same regardless of what kind of router you use um, so uh, without further ado let me go ahead and get started here um, a caveat for everyone as well um, the config I have on here is a sample config so the private and public keys if you're going to cut and paste what I have in here make sure that you update those because that this information is compromised as of the posting of this video I use these private and public keys just for demonstration purposes I just not what I use in my own networks just because well yeah it's publicly available information for everyone here and that's why I would advise that everyone update their private and public keys as well if they're following these videos and cut and pasting what's in there and as with uh, every other time um, I will be posting this PDF document on our website so that you can download it and use it as a reference guide um, for your network should you need it so uh, without further ado um, as you can see here we have our internal network here it's a 192.168.1 network um, and this road warrior is connecting to a hotel uh, Wi-Fi and it's using a 10.10.110 .10 .10. Um, another little addendum for everyone I know I'm using a 192.168.1 network here uh, I don't recommend that just because uh, a lot of ISP routers and um, a lot of default routers a, a lot of default uh, subnets are 192.168.1 or 192.168.2 um, so for that reason I always suggest to use a different subnet uh, for the purposes of my video here I'm using this network doesn't mean you should however if you want to that's fine although you could run into complications if you connect to a um, Wi-Fi or a network on your road warrior that has that same network then you'll have conflicts anyways so um, you know traditional setup here all these machines are connecting to this router they go up to the internet they pull their data they're able to connect all fine and dandy same with this road warrior laptop it connects over the internet and it can go to whatever it needs to do uh, and so as you can see because these subnets are different and because it's not connected to the WireGuard server there's no way for this guy to connect in here and so if you go to my if we go to our next slide here that's where we're able to start doing that and as you can see the arrows are a little more convoluted and I'm gonna try to break this down to the best of my ability if this uh, is not simplified enough please let me know in the comments and I can definitely do a follow-up video so the Road Warrior laptop just like this uh, LAN is able to connect to this application server over the internet no problem right and again these are just sample IPs I pulled out of thin air I don't know who these belong to and I don't know if they're live I'm just using it for the sake of this uh, video 
Um, if you see here the red line here, it's connecting into the LAN router through port forwarding to the WireGuard server. Okay, and you'll, you're going to see this in the config uh, as the last page here. It, we have an allowed IP of 10.10.110 slash 0 slash 24. Um, I'm going to update this. This actually should be 10.120, which is the subnet for WireGuard. And that's just a type on my end here. And we have um, on the client, this, this, is, this is part of the config of the client, 192.168.1, which is this whole network here. So once we do that and it connects, this guy is theoretically able to communicate with every machine here. Okay. And if we were to do a ping test, it would actually fail. And the reason for that is that even though this guy um, is going through WireGuard and sending a ping or trying to connect through HTTP or trying to send a, a, a print file, um, although it can communicate to these guys, these guys don't know how to communicate back to this router, or sorry, I mean this laptop. And the reason for that is they might see a packet coming in from 10.10.120.2, uh, uh, but they have no idea how to get back to it. You know, it sounds, you know, straightforward and common to us, but they don't know how. And the only way to do it, or, or there's two ways to do it. One, which is very cumbersome, would be to go to each one of these machines and add a static route. And the static route would essentially say, you know, if you want to communicate to any machine that's connecting to you, or if you want to reach out to any machine that's on a 10.10.120.0/24 network, you're going to have to go to 10.10. Sorry, 192.168.1.12, which is this guy here. Um, that's very cumbersome. Uh, so what you would really do is you would go to the router here and then you would add a static route, which is what I was telling you guys at the beginning of this video. Um, you would add a static route there. And so all these machines that are on DHCP and they connect to this router and go, hey, I'm getting this request from 10.10.120. Where, where do I respond? This guy's going to go, oh, yeah, I seen this uh, this subnet. Um, I was it was added to me as a static route. You actually need to go to this guy, 192.168.1.12, and send it this traffic. So these machines, like to say this LAN server here, would then go, okay, I'm gonna send my traffic back here. WireGuard server is gonna go, oh yeah, I I own this subnet and I know that the destination is 10.10.120.2, so I'm gonna forward it over this way. And that would essentially be what all you would need to do. And I hope I'm uh, this. This is coming across as relatively simple. Um, at the at the end result, to to actually get this to be done, you would essentially add that static route. And again, I will show that in the video shortly. Once I just show you guys the config and a routing table, just so that everything I'm saying here hopefully all comes together. So. I'm going to go down to my next page here. This is a sample route. So this would be on a on the Road Warrior, this guy right here. If I were to do, and I'm doing this on a Windows machine, as you can see here, these are um, screenshots from a, a, a command prompt on a Windows machine. Um, but it wouldn't be any different if you did it on a Linux machine or a Mac. Um, they would show the same information. So if we look here, all right, 0.0.0.0, which means everything, is going to 10.10.110.1. So if we, if I were to expand this diagram and I had a whole network for this guy here, there would be a router somewhere here that would be 10.10.110.1. This guy would connect to that and then out to the internet. Okay, that's what this line is showing here. All right, um, it's also showing here my routes on the network. Okay. This is the IP it's using for itself, it's, and it knows that in order for it to do anything on this network here, the first thing it needs to do is go out on this IP address, which is its own IP address, which then would take it to the default gateway, which would be 10.10.10.1, and then it would communicate with everything on that local network, which would be on the inverse, everything here on this side. 
Then we look at the WireGuard network right here. So as you see here, 10.10.120.255. And um, if you scroll across here, you see a 10.10.120.3, okay? Which uh, assuming, uh, you know, assuming this machine was dot three, and I can definitely update this PDF document to reflect that uh, when I post it live to everyone. Um, that's what this would be. So then as you can see, the, the routing on this client machine says, hey, if you want to go to this network, you, uh, or, you know, I, what's over here? On this network, use this IP address, all right? And the uh, same would be said about these machines here. They would say, if you want to connect to this network, connect to this IP. And um, uh, again, so here, 192.168.1. In order to connect, in order to connect to this network, which is represented here, okay, it says go to there you go, surprise, surprise, ten dot one twenty dot one dot three, which would be the IP IP address for this WireGuard client, okay. And again, I can update this if it makes it a little different, a little easier for one to read. Uh, I, I put two when I wrote this document, but when I was doing this testing, I used a dot three. It really doesn't make a difference. Um, and if you look here, this would be on the, on the inverse side. So you can see here, I obviously have blurred out the WAN IP that I'm using. This is on a router, on the router itself. Um, it's showing the IP address for the internet and I blurred it out. It's gateway is outside of itself and it's using ETH zero. Uh, or PPPoE3, but um, in a perfect world, in here you would see um, 192.168, uh, sorry, it would show in, 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 in your case, it would show 10.10.120.0, so what it shows here, and then over here, the gateway would be the WireGuard server, so 192.168.1.12. Again, I'm hope I hope everyone's keeping up with me here. And if you have any questions, please put it in the comments. And if there's an if you guys believe that there's a missing gap as to what I'm saying here, I'm be more than happy to update this video or do a follow-up video that further goes into these details. Okay. And then I'm gonna show you the last one here, which is the WireGuard server config and the WireGuard client. Uh, again, you can see here the allowed IP is this guy. This is what's going on the laptop. And this is the WireGuard uh, subnet itself. Um, <clears throat> these aren't huge changes from the other two videos I've shown. The only thing is I just put private key here. This is where you would put your private key. Um, this is the port that's available. Again, if you look at the last videos I showed you, it explains this stuff in a little more detail. So. I hope all this made sense. I'm now gonna move forward to the tutorial side of this where I'm actually gonna do this. So just bear with me here while I get rid of this and I'm gonna bring up the rest of my screen. Uh, here we go. So here is, I'm gonna bring it up here. Um, here is my command prompt. And as you can see, I'm trying to ping something on 192.168.1.60. I'm just going back here to the PDF document. You know, I'm this guy, I'm here right now. I'm trying to connect to something on here and go back to my PDF document or uh, my command prompt. I can't do it, all right? I'm pinging, nothing's working. Um, at the same time, I have my WireGuard server here and uh, uh, let me see, let me bring it up on my end here. It can ping that address because it's on that network. So if you look at my PDF document, I'll bring it up quickly one more time. The the um, putty session I was showing you represents this server right here. Let me go back to it. So if I go ping 192.168.1.60, it's able to get out there. It can ping and get a response back. So, you know, I'm just kind of setting the, the framework here. All right. Now, 
Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, now I, I've already connected through a different way um, to the network where I'm gonna be doing the static routing. And the reason I'm doing that is so you guys can see what I do. Um, I'm using a different network for that. So just bear with me for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and activate that. And let me bring up Firefox. Okay. Now this is blurred for security reasons, uh, but let me go ahead and sign in here. All right, so this is a Unify network. Uh, again, your router will look different from this, or if you're using Unify, it'll look exactly like this, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> so what I do is, like I said, I'm gonna go to settings, and I'm gonna go to routing and firewall. Um, there's another one in here. You can ignore this one. This is uh, this is the one I'm using right now just to connect in and show you guys what I need to do. Here is the routing that I was referring to. The destination network 10.10.120.0/24, which means anything that's in that 254 in the in, t in that slash 24 subnet, please go to this internal IP address. All right, and if we go back to the PDF document, uh, basically I'm telling the router, this guy right here, hey, anything that's on this network, connect to or send it to this IP address, which is here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and enable that. So I'm going to enable this route. And it's the next hop. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save. You don't have to worry about the distance. That's other, that, that those details are not relevant for this. That gets a little more complicated. So the routing is there. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to disconnect from that VPN for a moment. I'm going to, and then I'm going to connect now to the network I specifically set up for this. I'm going to go ahead and click on activate here. And you're going to see very soon. So if I do another ping test here, it should start working. Uh, again, if you looked at my other videos, uh, specifically the instructions as to how to set the CGNet, it shows you how to set up a WireGuard server. So I'm not gonna do that here. I'm just gonna show you guys. Here is the file. Again, um, uh, you know, the, don't bother using these private and public keys. These are just for testing. Um, so I'm going to go system CTL, uh, yeah, system CTL, um, start WG dash quick at, and then call, I called my, mine, um, Y2 route, but again, look at my other video. It tells you, you can do whatever you want. So I'm going to go ahead and start that. Uh, There you go, see? And now that it's started, we can see here on the command prompt, we're getting responses back. And the reason is because the routing is available, the VPN server started, and we're connecting in. And a good test for that would be to go to an, uh, a machine on that network. So I could do 1.20, and we're able to connect. Okay, so this is a, a slightly sw shorter video than the ones I've done before, um, but it is very important uh, in terms of trying to allow access to the greater network. Um, again, I hope I was able to convey the concept and the importance behind static routing. Um, if, again, if there's any questions on that, please uh, post it on the comments. I will be more than happy to respond if I'm able to. And um, of course, um, if there's any suggestions for other videos, please let me know as well. Um, lastly, uh, again, if you found these videos useful and you guys want to support the work that we do, um, we do have some uh, uh, wallets there for cryptocurrency, so you can do it through Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, if that's your thing. Um, and we truly appreciate that as, that it, as it helps us you know, continue moving this forward. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Have yourselves a good day.